Hey, so today I get to open up and review the Melbourne Tool Company's block plane after sitting on it for almost three months, I think. Hmm. Yay for getting COVID. Uh, James from Fix It Fingers did the I've never touched a hand plane before. Here's my first impressions. And Paul from The Wood Knight did the I know everything about planes and this is how it compares to other ones. I think I'm in the middle of those two. Um, I've some experience with planes, but I'm certainly no expert. This video can probably be described as the I know just enough about planes to be dangerous and this is how it performs for me review. That'll work. That cool's that piece. Now, the Melbourne Tool Company, they are a brand or I guess like an, an offshoot sort of thing that was set up by Timbercon. Um, I have done work with Timbercon in the past, however, this was bought with my money, my cash, so I get to say whatever I like about it. The first thing I'll say about it is that I quite like the packaging, it's a pretty cool design. Having said that, it's going to go in the recycling bin in a second, so eh, it'll look nice while it's in the bin. I bought this a little while ago when it was on sale, so I paid 159 I think. Um, the sale's finished, I'm sure they'll put it on sale again, but the standard price is about 20 bucks more, it's about 180 or so now. So 160 is the most I've ever paid for a plane. I do have a few of them up here, all of them are eBay or Trash and Treasure specials. Um, I think probably about 80 or 90 bucks is the most that I pay for any of these, but they're all second, third, fourth, fifth hand, you know, one of these is about 100 years old. Oh, I do have another plane that I bought last year. Come on. It doesn't really fit in the drawer. Oh. Let's talk about wood movement. <laughs> Did he come out? Mm. Oh, we got it. Wow, that, uh, that used to slip in there quite easily. That's what she said. Anyway. Last year I bought this little chamfer plane from Banggood, I think. So this one's pretty cool. It's for putting chamfers on the edges of boards. Um, it works well with softwood on spotted gum and merbo, which I use a lot because that's what I've got a lot of. It's pretty crap, but that's more of the wood than anything else. Um, I don't think you can, I, I, it's just not sharp enough, basically. Um, it works for a lot of things, but not for spotted gum and merbo. You know what? I do have a block plane as well. The old Trojan Special from Bunnings. I think I bought this about a decade ago. Probably paid about $15 and probably thought I overpaid it at the time. It's a piece of steel that's been bent. <laughs> it's a pile of crap and it's going in the trash. I only remembered I had it because I'm opening up the new one. So anyway, yes, I've got five or six planes up here plus the chamfer plane. So you might be thinking, well, Woodfather, what are you doing? You don't need to go buy another tool. And to be honest, you sound like my wife. Yeah, no, nah, you're both right. Pretty much anything I want to use this plane for, these planes or that chamfer plane will be able to do for me as well. Um, the difference is that they're generally a lot bigger, a lot heavier, um, and they need two hands to control it, whereas this one is just a, a one-handed boy. A block plane is definitely not a necessity when you're starting out woodworking, but I'm not starting out woodworking, so I get to splurge on these little treats. So if you go shopping for a block plane at one of the main woodworking stores in Australia, um, you're not really spoiled for choice, to be honest. You can go really cheap. Um, there's a model called the Groz or the Grows, which is very close to Gross. Why would you call your company that? So with the Groz ones, after reading a bunch of reviews, it sounds like it could be a good tool if you want to put in the effort to clean it up and spend a few hours tuning it and making everything right, uh, which I don't want to do. If you wanted to, you can go to the other end and buy something that I would consider quite expensive. So 300 plus for a Lee Nelson or a Veritas block, block plane. So that's the two ends of the price scale there. And in the center, you'll find the Luban or the Luban block plane or the Melbourne Tool Company one. After watching Paul's review it seemed like the Luban and the Melbourne Tool Company block planes were quite similar in quality and price point so I like other stuff I've bought from Timacon they're only around the corner so hey sure I'll go buy this one. I'm going to use this tool for a couple of very specific tasks. Number one I want to clean up end grain joinery that's something I use the big planes for but it's a little bit fiddly I'm hoping that a block plane is going to excel at that. That's what they're supposed to be for. Um, and the other reason would be for the standard practice of, you know, breaking edges, putting chamfers on, roundovers, that sort of thing. There's a good chance that I put a roundover on everything in the workshop once I get this tuned up. Again, all of that stuff can be done with the planes and the other tools that I already own. The difference is this is smaller. It's a little bit higher quality. It's got a tighter angle on the blade and I can use it with one hand. First impressions are quite nice. It's not even put together. But look at this little wheel. Oh. Too far. We'll go the other way. 
<laughs> My other planes don't do that. Straight out of the box, the blade does look nice and clean, um, but it does need a little bit of work just to put an edge on the end. Cleaning up the back took me about 30 seconds. It's, it's really quite flat, quite nice. This is what I've been using to sharpen for the last couple of years, and it works, but it's kind of messy and I'm sort of over it. So what I've actually done is I've gone out and bought myself a whetstone grinder as well. So I haven't got that set up yet, but I'll do a review on it very, very soon. Make sure you hit subscribe so you can see what that one's like. A couple of years ago, to help me with sharpening, I made this little guide block. All it is is a guide so that you put your chisel up against it, put the blade right up to the edge, and now when I go and put this guide underneath, I don't have to think about it. I know that it's at the exact uh, angle that my chisels are always going to be ground at. And then on the other side, I've got one for a slightly different angle for plane blades. However, being a block plane, this angle is a lot steeper than what I have my bench planes at, so I can't use this block for it. So I'm just going to sort of freewheel it, which I hate doing because I'm pretty bad at this stuff. Okay, so after sharpening, I think you have to go and shave off some hair on your arm. That's a weird woodworking thing to do. I'm not going to do that ever again. <laughs> Uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time sharpening it. Number one, because the blade didn't really need it. I've only, it was quite flat already. Um, and then on the bevel, I've just gone and sharpened the very, very tip of it. But also I didn't spend a lot of time doing it because I'm sick of doing sharpening with water stones. It's just messy and annoying. Um, so I'm really looking forward to opening up the whetstone grinder and having the machine do the work. And instead, all I have to do is hold it. Looking forward to that. Now, I took this out of the box when I got it and was just holding, I was in my office and I was just holding it, just admiring, going, oh, it's so pretty. And then I looked at my hands and I had like three cuts on there. The edges of the block plane are very, very sharp. And if you sort of let it sit on your hand and then pull it back, it'll just slice right through your skin. I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm going to smooth it off. I'm putting a chamfer on my chamfering tool. That's definitely worth doing. You can really tell that the bottom edges now are a lot smoother. They're not going to hurt, whereas these ones up here are still quite sharp. Because I wiped off all the oil that it came with, I'm just going to put a couple of drops of 3-in-1 on a piece of paper towel and rub it back in. Now you may not need to, but you can download the instructions for the plane from their website, which is really cool. And on there, it tells you exactly what you need to do when you're setting it all up. So, number one, loosen the lever cap wheel just enough so adjustments can be made without excessive force. So that's the lever cap wheel. I'll tighten it back up because it's super loose at the moment. Go back a little bit. All right, now I can wiggle the blade around, but everything's going to stay in place. Number two, open the mouth of the plane to avoid advancing the blade into the mouth. So I've got the mouth opened all the way. You can see it's sticking out there and there's a big gap there. Number three, place the plane on a flat timber surface and advance the blade until it just touches the surface. That looks pretty good. So it's just poking out. Holding it upside down, check the blade is parallel to the mouth opening. I've brought the blade out a little bit more so that I can see if it's good or not. So now I'll just wind it back in. Cool, so I think the blade is all set. So the last thing to do is to fix up the mouth. So you just unscrew that to loosen it up, then you can wiggle this guy back and forth and it should close up. All right, now I can tighten that guy down and we should be good to go. So I'm pretty sure I said that this is something I wasn't going to use it for, but this is a nice thin piece of jar. So we'll see what it's like. Probably still a little bit too thick though. You probably can't tell on camera, but that's about half as thick as this one, and I can still go a lot thinner. It's funny, I mean, you can barely even see any blade sticking out, but it still takes such a thick cut. Ooh, that's more fun. That's nice and thin. If you've never made shavings with a plane, oh my god, you're missing out on woodworking. <laughs> Don't even have to make anything. I remember the first time I sharpened a blade, I, um, sharpened it up and then I just spent two or three nights just doing that to a couple of pieces of wood. Really good for stress relief. This is a piece of black butt which is normally quite a nice piece of wood to use. It's a hard wood but it's a soft hard wood. The 
the grain actually goes all over the place up here, which is a problem I had with a couple of projects that I use this wood for. I can see that it's really smoothing it out now. Now the point of this blame is for end grain. I don't want it to blow out on this end, so I'm just gonna put this, uh, this piece here to keep it nice and tight. How cool is that? There we go. End grain shaving. That's very cool. <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly what I want it for. So first impressions are quite nice. It looks beautiful. It feels good in the hand. It's nice and heavy. Um, the blade was nice and flat. It only took a minute to put a sharp edge on the end. The body is square to the base. I've checked that. The base is flat as well, so I've got no worries there. So for 180 bucks, yes, I'm quite happy with this one. I, I quite like it. The other guys pointed out some flaws in there when, when they did their reviews. I think James might have had a little rust spot on the body. Um, and Paul's one, when he took his one apart, you can see the milling marks underneath, which is something that he didn't expect to see. On my one, I don't have any rust spots anywhere, but I do have uh, the same milling marks as Paul, which is how the plane is made. So it's not a flaw, it's a feature, I guess. Um, it doesn't concern me at all because it's covered the whole time. I don't really care. Um, my one's not perfect though. There is a slight imperfection, which you might've seen earlier in the video. But if I go underneath on the edge of the mouth, you can see right there, there's a little gap. What it is, is it, it's only about half a millimeter deep. Um, if I took the whole thing apart, I could show you, but I can't be bothered taking it apart, I'm sorry, because it's such a minor thing. Oh, just cut myself on the blade. Good job, idiot. Um, so this little mark here is from the milling process. It's not like I've dropped it or anything. Um, it's on the body. Basically, when it's come over here, it's just gone a touch too far, um, I guess, on the last pass, because it's right on the edge, and it's, it's left that little gap there. So because the mouth comes down and covers that part, it's actually not going to affect performance in any way. However, one of the great things about living near a store and being able to go into the shop and actually buy something instead of buying online, which everything I buy is online, so this is the rarity for me, um, I was able to go down to the guys and just point it out just to see what they thought. They were the same opinion as me. Um, where it is, it's a manufacturing imperfection, I guess. Um, where it is is not going to affect performance of the plane. So having said that, even though they agreed that it wasn't going to affect the performance in any way, um, they still immediately offered a replacement for me. I said no, because I don't see the point. It's not going to affect anything. Um, <laughs> it's still one of the best looking tools in my collection. So it's not like that little mark's gonna get me upset. And I don't know, maybe now that just means that it's my one. Um, overall though, quite pretty, quite fun to use um, and quite useful. So I've never taken ingrain shavings before. That was, that was a treat. That's really cool. So there you go. I'm going to get another video out very soon about sharpening. Um, well, not so much about sharpening, but more about the new whetstone grinder that I've bought because I can't wait to just do away with the whetstones and going back and forth and my fingers aching and getting everything messy. That's just crap. I'm not interested in that. So I'm looking forward to setting up that one. When it's here, there'll be a link to it right about here. But in the meantime, just go and check out my uh, my Woodfather's jig because if you haven't seen that one, you're really missing out. Catch. There's hair all over the desk. <laughs>